All right, hello, and thank you for tuning in to my Pokemon Generation 1 in-game tier list. First things first, what is an in-game tier list? So for an in-game tier list, we're going to be ranking all of the Pokemon based purely on their in-game performance. So I will not be considering their aesthetics, not be considering their competitive viability. We're going to be ranking them purely based on how they help you get through the eight gyms, the Elite Four, and everything in between. I'll quickly explain what the tiers are. All the way at the tippy top, we have the Needle Kingdom. No prize for guessing who goes here. A tier will be the Staples, and I don't mean the Office Depot, I mean Pokemon that have great availability and some sort of very important niche that you shouldn't go without. B tiers for Pokemon that are, are good, not quite as good as A, uh, but uh, still perfectly viable, perfectly usable. Uh, they typically have some like, minor or even major flaw that keeps them from quite reaching A, but Pokemon and B are still a very good choice. C tier is going to encompass most of the Pokemon uh, available in Generation 1, and that's usable. If you've seen the Pokemon YouTube community, you've probably noticed that there is an absolute abundance of Pokemon Challenge videos, so you can beat the game with absolutely anything. It's a kid's game, so the difficulty is, uh, let's say, on the lower end. Almost any Pokemon is usable, even the ones down in D for don't bother. It's just that the ones in D, I, I want to differentiate from C, uh, in that the ones in D are, I mean, if you want to make your challenge run challenging, maybe use those. <laughs> we'll put it that way. All right. I've assembled all the Pokemon here in Pokedex order. And just to keep the list from being too cluttered, I've only used the first forms of each one. So when I say Bulbasaur, I actually mean Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur, but I don't want to put all three on the list. It's going to get really crowded. So each Pokemon is just a stand-in for their entire family. This is a Generation 1 tier list, but I will be more heavily weighting red and blue. I'll mention yellow where uh, relevant, but for the most part, I am talking about red and blue. All right, let's get started. So, dex number one, Bulbasaur. Can't go in anywhere other than A. Bulbasaur is quite good, uh, especially in red and blue where it's your starter and it's with you for the entire game. Bulbasaur's grass and poison type, probably the best of the entire bunch. It matches up very well against the first three gyms, destroys Brock, destroys Misty, resists Surge's attacks, but generally by the time you get to the third game, the ga gym, sorry, the game has opened up enough that you can flesh out your team and sort of patch up the weaknesses of your starter. Bulbasaur's move pool is a little shallow, but it's good enough. Notably, it gets the three powder moves. That's Sleep Powder, Stun Spore, and Poison Powder. Most notable is Sleep Powder, because uh, if you don't know, Sleep in Gen 1 is completely broken. It lasts forever, and you can't even attack on the turn you wake up. So putting a Pokemon to sleep is basically the same as knocking it out. Bulbasaur also gets Razor Leaf, which is very good in Generation 1. It only has 55 base power, but it has a high crit rate. And what high crit rate means in Gen 1 is that if your base speed is over, I believe, 70, you're practically guaranteed a crit. So it doesn't actually have 55 base power. In practice, it more has uh, double that. So what's that, 110? Bulbasaur, very, very good. It's basically the easy mode option for the game. Next is Charmander. Also goes in A. It's definitely not as good as Bulbasaur in terms of in-game performance, but it's serviceable. Uh, it has a very good move pool, gets Slash, so that's another high crit rate move. Not quite as good as Razor Leaf, but still very good. You can teach it Dig with a TM. Dig is 100 base power, so same as Earthquake, just takes two turns. It's of course important to note that Charmander does very poorly against Brock and Misty, who are the two hardest gym leaders in the game. It really struggles to hurt Brock, but Brock doesn't actually have any rock moves to take advantage of Fire's weakness to rock. Uh, Misty, however, does have water attacks, so you're going to need to catch something else to take on Misty. Once Charmander evolves into Charizard, things don't really change. Uh, Charizard has good stats for sweeping. It's got good enough speed and good special. The issue is that Flying type doesn't really offer anything in this gen. You can get Wing Attack, which is only 35 base power. You can't even learn Fly unless you're playing Yellow. Uh, it's worth noting that Fire does not actually resist Ice in this generation, and Blizzard is 90% accurate, so you really have to watch out. Still, overall, Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard, its whole family, they're fine. Uh, probably the best fire types in the game, especially considering the perfect availability. Alright, 
Squirtle. Another addition to the A tier. Squirtle is fine. Destroys Brock. Not as useful against Misty, but still serviceable. I mean, you both resist each other. Nobody has an advantage. Weak to Surge, but at that point you can just hop over to Diglett Cave and break the game. That's not a problem at all. Squirtle is stats are fine its move pool is actually quite bad but water types are good but very scarce especially in the early game there's a ton of them once you actually access the good rod super rod and surf but until then you're really limited in your options and that option you're limited to is squirtle if you picked him so for that alone really squirtle lands in a there's better water types but you just don't have them on your team for as long so squirtle it's good enough to be an A. Alright, next is... Uh, it's going to be a bit of a hot take. Caterpie. Your early game bug. A tier. I'm, I'm not kidding. I think people are sleeping on Butterfree. And they're sleeping because they got hit by sleep powder. <laughs> Butterfree is actually one of the faster sleep users in the game. 80 base speed. It's not blazing fast, but it's perfectly fine. And having Sleep Powder is very, very powerful. More than that, it's the fact that Butterfree gets access to Psychic Coverage. It learns Confusion and Psybeam by level up. And if you've ever played Gen 1, you know that Psychic is completely broken. There are so many Poison types uh, that are all weak to Psychic. Having Confusion and Psybeam as natural level up moves is incredibly valuable. It's your earliest possible access to Psychic Coverage. And even though Butterfree gets outclassed in the late game, I think it is so powerful in the early game that it is worth putting up here. Unlike Weedle, <laughs> you might have noticed that the list is pretty top heavy, but availability cannot save Weedle. Weedle is just bad. <laughs> it's bug and poison, so the typing doesn't offer anything. It's saving grace, if you could call it that, is twin needle. Probably the best bug type move in the game, but that's not saying much. If you want to try and take out some psychics with Twin Needle, it's not really going to work because you're a poison type. So you're weak to psychic and your stats are probably worse. So I'm sorry, Weedle. All right, next is Pidgey, your early game bird. Now, early game birds have a reputation of being quite useless. And that started with Pidgey. <laughs> D, don't bother. I think Pidgey's weakness, the, the main weakness, is that it evolves so late. It evolves into Pidgeot. In its mid-30s, I believe. Pidgeotto much earlier, but Pidgeotto's not very good. <laughs> a Pidgeot is not good either, to tell the truth. There's no real situation in the game where you're going to be thinking, Man, I, I really wish I had a Pidgeot. Its move pool is bad. You get wing attack. You get fly, which is okay. Sky attack is your strongest flying type move, but it takes two turns, and you're not invulnerable for the first one. Pidgey is just not worth the trouble. You have better options around the same time. All right, Rattata. It's good. Yeah. Uh, it's decently fast, decently strong. Not incredibly fast or strong, but good enough in those respects. The real reason it's in B is because it gets early access to a move called Hyper Fang. It's 80 base power normal type move. And when you use a move that's the same type as you, you gain what's called a same type attack bonus or stab that gives it a 1.5 power boost. Hyper Fang is very powerful for the point in the game where you acquire it to the point where if the opponent does not resist normal, and most Pokemon don't, you can kind of just spam Hyper Fang and win the early game. And for that alone, I think Radita is good enough to be in B. It also has a very good special move pool. Not the direction I would go, but it's an option. All right, Spiro, the edgier Pidgey. Edgy enough to edge Pidgey out by two tiers. Spiro is quite good. It's available a little later than Pidgey. When I say a little later, I mean like 40 seconds of walking later. It's not much of a difference. And it's much better. Uh, it gets far better moves. Uh, it gets Peck instead of Gust. Gust is actually a normal type move in Gen 1. Peck destroys all the early game bugs. Not that you really need help with that, but it makes the game a little faster, especially if you chose Bulbasaur or Squirtle, who don't have Ember they can use against them. The real reason why Spiro is here, though, is because it evolves much earlier. It falls into fear in its, in its 20s, and it gets Drill Peck, which is it's nothing fancy, but it's a very decent flying-type stab move. Yeah, I think B is a good home for Spiro. All right, Ekans, Jesse's superstar. Don't bother. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Very mediocre stats. 
probably the best thing it can do is abuse wrap. The way wrap works in generation one is it doesn't deal much damage, but if it lands, it's 85% accurate. Your opponent can't do anything. Like they can't act at all. So if you're faster than them, you can wrap over and over and over and over. And as long as you don't miss, uh, you can completely lock out your opponent. That's a pretty good strategy. Ekans also has access to glare, which can paralyze opponents to make yourself faster, but it takes forever. And in an in-game playthrough, you don't want to be sitting there waiting for wrap animations to play out over and over and over. You just want to hit things with like flamethrower and win the battle. I would say don't bother with Ekans. Uh, of course, you can beat the game with anything, but there's better choices than Ekans. Pikachu, mascot of the entire franchise, uh, just barely escapes D. Uh, Pikachu is available fairly early in Viridian Forest. Electric type coverage is useful, especially if you pick Charmander, it gives you a way to get around Misty. Uh, you can zap flying types, there's a fair amount of those. The issue is Pikachu's stats are just terrible, <laughs> they're, they're really bad. Until you get to Celadon City, we can get a Thunderstone and evolve it, and even there, it's not great. It just becomes better than bad. Pikachu is alright, there's better electric types, but none are available quite as early as Pikachu. Ironically, Pikachu is worse in yellow because you can never evolve it, so it'll be stuck with its terrible base stats for the entire game. Sandshrew. Surprisingly good. Its stats are decent, it's got good attack, very good defense. But the reason why it's all the way up in B is it gets Slash, so that's automatic crits, and you can teach it the Dig TM almost immediately. Ground type stab, 100 base power, very good. Sandshrew is, I, I think, a lot more powerful than people give it credit for. All right, Nidoran female. Not quite good enough to ascend to the Nido Kingdom, but close. Definitely an A. Nidoran female is very, very good. <laughs> it's available early. If you're playing yellow, you can pick up double kick early to help get past Brock, but otherwise it doesn't earn double kick till something absurd like the 50s, so just forget about it. The reason it's up here is not because of its move pool, although its move pool is very good. It's not because of its stats. Its stats are actually mediocre, but the reason why it's so powerful is you get access to its final form, Nidoqueen, very early in the game. You'll need to be, I believe, level 16 to evolve into Nidorina, and then evolving into Nidoqueen is a stone evolution. You just need a Moonstone, you can pick one up in Mount Moon, and then you have a fully evolved, like, second tier Pokemon before Misty, which is incredible. Differences between Nidoran female and male. Nidoran female gets Body Slam through level up. Body Slam is very good, and... Nita Queen's stats lean a little bit more defensive, which is not what you want in an early game playthrough. You basically just want to blitz through everything. Uh, speaking of blitzing, reigning over everything from the Nido Kingdom, it's Need Ren Mail. The best Pokemon in the game in terms of in-game performance. If you've ever seen a glitchless speedrun, uh, you, you'll know just how powerful Nita Ren Mail Nidorino and Nido King are, for a lot of the same reasons as Nidoran Female, but just taken to the extreme. <laughs> it's got better offenses. They're actually not spectacular, but they're more than good enough to destroy everything. The main reason that Nidoran Male, rather than Female, gets to uh, be the best Pokemon in the game is this thing right here. This little horn. Because it, instead of Body Slam, he gets Horn Drill. Now you might know Horn Drill as a 30% accurate 1A KO move, which is kind of useless. But, in Generation 1, you can use an item, the X-Accuracy. What X-Accuracy does is it doesn't actually raise your accuracy, it simply removes the accuracy check. So all moves in Gen 1, even ones that are 100% accurate, have a chance to miss because of the spaghetti code. But if you use X-Accuracy, you will never miss. So as long as you're faster than your opponent, which is a prerequisite for Horn Drill to work, you can one-hit KO absolutely anything, guaranteed. And for that reason, Nidoran Male lands itself the top spot, and I'll tell you right now, nothing else even comes close. Alright, next. Clefairy. A tier, very good. Unfortunately, it's not a fairy type, no fairy type yet, but even as a normal type, it's very good. Uh, similar to Nidoran Female, Nidoran Male, you can evolve it up to Clefable very early, you just need a Moonstone. And you catch this in Mount Moon, so they're all around you. Clefable has an excellent move pool, one of the best in the game. You can actually get Mega Punch right after you pick up Clefairy. It's a normal type move with decent power, and you get the same type of attack bonus. Clefable's stats aren't incredible, but they're good enough. It's a very solid option for your team. It's got great utility. It's good. Unlike Jigglypuff. <laughs> Jigglypuff, in a lot of ways, is similar 
To Clefairy, you pick them up around the same time. They're both Moonstone evolutions, but the difference is Jigglypuff and its evolution Wigglytuff invest way more of their stats in HP. So while they have a lot of health, they don't really do anything with it. They're not really any bulkier than Clefairy and Clefable because their defenses are worse and their offenses are worse. So it's really just bad Clefairy, basically. Uh, it does get access to Sing, which is a sleep move, but at 55% accuracy, you can do better things. Sorry, Jigglypuff. At least you're in Smash. Alright, Vulpix. Usable. Unfortunately, fire types are just not very good in Gen 1. One of the main uses of fire types in the Pokemon series as a whole is destroying steel types, which are the best type in the game. But there are no steel types, so because of that, fire type as a whole is worse. Vulpix's main problem is its move pool is awful. It's a Firestone evolution, up to Ninetales, so you can evolve it immediately, but if you do so, you no longer learn level up moves, which means you're stuck with, like, Ember until you reach the Fire Blast TM. And that's if you want to use Fire Blast on Vulpix. It's not really worth it. It's not so bad that it's in D, but you can do a, you can do better things. Zubat. Zubato. Don't bother. Bad. <laughs> Bad. It gets much better in Gen 2 with its evolution to Crobat, but we're not in Gen 2, so the highest you can go is Golbat, which doesn't have anything noteworthy about it. It's got overall less stats. You get Confuse Ray. Wow. Other things also get Confuse Ray. It's just not worth your time. In I think Zubat's reputation as a pest is kind of overblown, but not in Generation 1. In Generation 1, it really is kind of useless. All right. Oddish. It's good, better than you'd think. Uh, it's it's carried by two things, mostly the powders, so you can sleep powder things, but it's quite slow, so you can't quite take advantage of it as much as you'd like. And it gets Razor Leaf, so automatic crits. It's particularly good if you picked Charmander because this is your best way to get past Misty. If you're playing, I believe, Red version, where it's the exclusive. Yeah, that's about all I have to say about Oddish, solid. Paris. Uh, I would put this in Don't Bother were it not for Paris's access to Spore. It is the only Pokemon in the game that gets Spore, and Spore is the only, up to this day, 100% accurate sleep move. So having a 100% accurate, basically 1A KO move, is incredibly powerful. Unfortunately, Paris is slow as molasses, <laughs> and it also has, I would say, the worst typing in Pokemon history. <laughs> the type chart is a little different in Generation 1, but because Bug is weak to poison, not resistant to it, Paris actually has three four times weaknesses. It's four times weak to fire, four times weak to flying, and four times weak to poison. What a fate. Uh, if it didn't have Spore, it would probably be one of the worst Pokemon in the game. Alright, Venonat. Eh, very underwhelming. It has sort of a reputation as this cool psychic bug, but until it evolves into Venomoth, which happens very late, level 32, its special set is actually horrible. Uh, and even when it evolves into Venomoth, it's not that much better than Caterpie, who you've had for far more of the game, and who hits its power spike much earlier, level 10. Yeah, Venonat's not the worst, but it's just not worth the investment. Diglett. All the way to A. Diglett is crazy. You can catch one in Diglett Cave, which is in the east. Yes, east part of Vermilion City. It's actually not Diglett. That's the powerhouse. It's Doug Trio. You can catch level 32 Doug Trio. And at this point, most of your opponents are like in their 20s, maybe. Doug Trio is lightning fast. In Generation 1, crits are based off of your base speed. So with Doug Trio's speed stat, you get like something, I think like in the 20s for your crit percentage. It's crazy. You get stab dig right off the bat. You're outspeeding everything and knocking them all out in one hit. It's excellent. Uh, you can't go wrong with Diglett and Doug Trio. Meow, that's right. That's, mm, that's wrong. It's, it's not very good. It would be good. It would be good if it got Slash earlier. It does have Slash, but it takes a while to learn it. And until it gets Slash, you've got this very weak normal type that's just scratching stuff. Once it evolves into Persian, it's it's okay. If it got Slash earlier, I'd, I'd probably move it up a tier. But as it stands, it's, it's just too much work to get it to the point where it's viable. And even once it's viable, it's not like it takes over or anything. Psyduck. The first in a long line of water types that would be good if they were available earlier, and also water types that are just outclassed by other water types. Psyduck's fine, you just get better options. That's really all I have to say about Psyduck. Alright, Mankey. 
Mankey goes in B purely for its utility in yellow. In yellow, you can catch Mankey before Brock, and it's your best way to get past Brock. You just you just kick him. And other than that, Mankey doesn't really have a use, but it's so vital to your yellow playthrough, uh, unless you use like leader and female, that I'd say Mankey gets to B and B. Fighting types in general, in generation one, are pretty awful because they don't get any good moves and Psychic is the best type, uh, which makes all the fighting types worse. So uh, a bit of a, a bit of a look into the future here. Fighting types not going to perform too well on here. Growlithe, very similar to Vulpix. It's a fire type, not too great in generation one. It's another stone evolution, so you can evolve it right away, but again, you'll be stuck with terrible moves. It's worth noting that Arcanine has very, very good stats, like very good, one of the highest in the generation. Uh, but no real way to take advantage of those stats. It just lacks the moves. I should mention now, maybe I should have mentioned earlier, that uh, the tiers aren't really ordered within the tiers. So ones in C are better than D, but I'm not really paying attention to the uh, ordering within the tiers. So I'm not saying there's this huge gap between Growlithe and Vulpix. They're about as equally useless. <laughs> Sorry. All right, Poliwag. Boop. Very similar to Psyduck. It's water type. Water types are good, but you can get better water types than these. These two. Uh, water fighting typing at its final evolution, Polyrath, is interesting, but fighting typing is really a liability in this generation. What's the best fighting type move you can get? Like, Submission? It's like 80 base power, 80 accuracy with recoil. Oof. Sorry. Alright, Abra. Easy A. Abra completely breaks the game. Of the Pokemon that you have to invest experience in, Abra gives you the best return. You have to get it to level 16 before it can actually attack. Abra itself only knows Teleport, which is a non-attacking move. And in Generation 1, remember, there's no held item, so you can't use Experience Share. Your only option is to switch train. If you get Abra to level 16, though, the game is over. Uh, Psychic is the best type in the game, and I'd say Abra is the best Psychic type in the game for your general playthrough. Super fast, crazy special. And special is both your special attack and special defense, so it's not even that frail when taking special attacks. It's incredible. Even if you can't evolve it into Alakazam, Kadabra stats are more than good enough to tear the game apart. Easy A. Machop. Machamp's one of my favorite Pokemon. Don't bother. Fighting types are just awful in Gen 1. You're probably not even going to get Machamp because you have to trade. It's just... It's, it's really sad to see. He trained so hard, only to end up in D. There's really nothing that the Machop family brings to the table. Sorry. Bellsprout. Basically interchangeable with Onyx. I'm sorry, not Onyx. Uh, Oddish. I would say overall better. It's a little faster, a little less bulky, and that's exactly the trade you'd want to make for an in-game playthrough. A lot of the same utility. You get the powders, you get Razor Leaf. It's good. Tentacool. Hey, did you expect that? Uh, Tentacool and Tentacruel. Because they're so common, you sort of get the impression that they're not good. But in Generation 1, at least, that impression is wrong because it's got 100 speed, which is very fast for Generation 1, and 120 special, which is outrageous. Just slap on Surf, Ice Beam, Blizzard, and win the game. <laughs> He's very good. All right, Geodude. Solid, uh, pardon the pun. <laughs> He's good. Available in Mount Moon. Uh, at that point, it only gets Tackle. And unfortunately, Rock Throw in Gen 1, for whatever reason, just sucks. It's got terrible base power, terrible accuracy. So you're, you can't really use your Rock Stab until you pick up Rock Slide in Celadon City. But G-Dude's available early. It's a normal resist, which is very important because normal type attacks are everywhere. You get Earthquake later on. If you're lucky enough to trade, you can get it to Golem, in which case it becomes very good. Uh, it, I think it's solid enough to be in B, just barely. Honestly, it, it, you could also put it in C, but I, I like Geodude. It's my mom's favorite Pokemon. So a little bit of favoritism there. Ponyta. Uh, the C tier, it's, it's getting hot. <laughs> uh, Ponyta, its stats are fine, but it's available fairly late. Uh, you can't get it until Cycling Road. And it, it just doesn't bring enough to the table. Poor move pool. Just... Nothing impressive. Cool episode in the anime, though. Slowpoke. Also in C, but for different reasons than Poliwag or Poliwhirl. I wouldn't say that Slowpoke is necessarily outclassed. It's just that it's not 
good for an in-game playthrough. It's available very late, you get in Seafoam Islands, and as the name implies, it's slow. And you don't want to be slow, you want to be fast, you want to hit things before they hit you. Water Psyche typing is incredible, and it gets amne Amnesia, which boosts your special by two, which again in this game is both your special attack and special defense. So Slower is basically invincible, but um, it's just too slow to really do anything, sorry. Magnemite. Also in C. Not bad on paper, very good special, but again, slow, which is not what you want to be. And there's better, faster electric types you can get earlier if you're playing red and blue. Later in yellow, but in yellow you're forced to use this thing, so whatever. Magnemite's not great. Alright, far-fetched. You ready for this? B. <laughs> I, I'm dead serious. Farfetched is actually kind of good, which is ironic because if you're if you're not aware, Farfetched is literally a joke. It's based on a Japanese proverb, uh, which I believe is um, "Kamo wa negi o shotte kuru," which uh, translates to a, a duck bearing leaks. And what that means is to just be aware of things that seem too good to be true. Because you're supposed to cook a duck with leeks, so if the duck comes to you with its own leek, saying, Oh, cook me. Yeah, that's too good to be true, right? And that's sort of um, reinforced by how you get it in-game, because it's a trade for a Spearow. And you're, you're told you're getting this awesome new Pokemon, and you get this thing. It's actually pretty good, though. <laughs> um, uh, for two reasons. Actually, well, yeah, for three reasons. Reason number one, Slash. And it's normal type, so you get Stab Slash even better. Uh, it's actually a very good HM slave, which is relevant in a normal playthrough, especially in a generation where there is no move deleter, but you can load up Farfetch'd with HMs, you just need one move slot for Slash, and then you've got a viable team member, and don't underestimate the value of convenience in Generation 1, because Generation 1 has a lot of quality of life improvements that are missing. So Farfetch'd actually <laughs> gets value from being an HM slave, and also because it's traded Pokemon, it gets 1.5 times the XP. Farfetch is actually not not too bad in Generation 1. Past that, it's, it's horrible, but Generation 1, not bad at all. Uh, do, do note that I am talking about Red and Blue, where it is the traded version. In uh, Yellow, you catch it much later, and it's not traded, so it kind of sucks. Alright, do Duo. B. <laughs> Did I say B? I meant C. Um... Which is ironic because it is by far the best of the normal flying types. It's the fastest, it's the strongest. Uh, the issue is that it's really late in the game. You get in Cycling Road, and by then, sort of the normal flying niche of killing bugs and grasses, you don't really need it. It's a perfectly fine option, it's just not available for much of the game. Seal. It's a water type, comes a water ice type. It's fine. It's kind of slow, decently bulky, but it's just better things you can do. Also available quite late. Grimer. No bother. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of poison types down here, by the way. But Grimer is not, not worth a spot on your team. It's decently bulky, and that's about it. It doesn't really do anything. It's also quite slow. And available very late, Pokemon Mansion. So you're almost done with the game by that point. Shelter. Shelter, I think, is good enough to go into good. It's a stone evolution up into Cloister. Cloister is invincible in Generation 1. It's got crazy defense. I believe the best in the game. I might be wrong on that. Its special stat is actually decent. It's 80. Uh, it suffers a lot in Generation 2 when 80 special becomes its special attack. And its defense, special defense, drops by quite a bit. But in Generation 1, it's actually respectably bulky on the special side. And it's got decent offense because, yeah, 80 special is fine. It's good, but I, I'd rather just go with 10 cool. Ghastly. Goes in A. It's excellent. You can get one in Lavender Tower. And Ghost type in Generation 1 is very, very strong. Because there are so many Pokemon that have horrendous move pools that are forced to hit you with random normal type moves. They just don't even affect you. They literally cannot touch you. And Ghastly's stats are nothing to laugh at either. Uh, they're, he's very fast, very good special, and those are probably the two best stats in Generation 1. 
It's also got a very good move pool, but that move pool is TM dependent. You can teach a Thunderbolt, but that means you're not teaching Thunderbolt to something else. It's very good, but it will take a bit of investment. And if you can trade to evolve to Gengar, even better. All right, Onyx. Uh, Onyx, I'm actually going to give him his own tier. Add row below. Uh, all right, can we change the color of this? Yeah, let's make it gray. Actually, let, let's make it a uh, pewter. There we go. The uh, pewter crucible. There we go. I would say that uh, Onyx is uh, the worst fully evolved Pokemon in Generation 1. I'm dead serious. Onyx is absolutely horrible. Uh, if you've only ever seen the Onyx, you might... If you've only seen the Onyx, sorry. If you've only ever seen the anime, uh, you might get this impression that Onyx is some invincible badass. Uh, that impression is wholly mistaken. Onyx is awful. It's got good defense and absolutely nothing else. It's a tax stat. Do you know what its a tax stat is? It's 45. It's absolutely pathetic. You know what else has 45 attack? Pidgey. Garbage. Don't waste your time with Onyx. I'm not even sorry. I, I hope that during your time down there in the Pewter Crucible, getting crushed by the upper tiers, you find the strength to become a Steelix. Steelix ain't great either, by the way. Alright, Drowsy. It's a Psychic type. I can't put it any lower than B, really. It's basically just bad... Abra, it, it's bulkier, but slower and with less special. And you'd rather have more speed and more special. Not bad at all, but just use Abra. Krabby. Usable. Krabby and Kingler actually have sky-high attack stats. Very good, uh, but poor special. And in Generation 1, all water moves are special, so you can't really take advantage of your stab type. It does get access to Crab Hammer, which is a high crit move, so that means crits all day. So that means it can still use its water typing that way. Uh, it's a very good HM slave, actually. But uh, it's down here because it's overall just outclassed, and uh, it doesn't come until a fair, a fair ways into the game. All right, Voltorb. It's okay. Very fast. In fact, I believe Electrode is the fastest Pokemon in the game. So that also means you have the highest crit rate. It's available... I believe you can pick one up right before you enter Rock Tunnel. But it's not really worth it. Uh, its stats overall are kind of me mediocre aside from its crazy speed. It's fine, but you don't really need one. Execute. Usable. Very good and competitive, uh, but you can only catch one in the Safari Zone, which is so late into the game. It's kind of slow. It gets the powders, which is very, very good, but uh, it's just not around for most of the game. Grass-like psychic typing is very good, and has incredible special. Really, it, it's weighed down by its speed and its late availability. Not bad at all, though. Cubone! It's okay. If you're playing the version without Sandshrew in it, it might be more worth your time. Uh, it's a solid ground-type attacker. Uh, the difference is, I believe it's a little slower than Sand Slash, and it doesn't get Slash, so... There's no real reason to use... Cubone over Sand Slash, and really there's no reason to use Sand Slash over uh, Diglin Dug Trio, so it's reflected in the tiering. Hitmon Lee, the best fighting type in the game, is in C. <laughs> I know Mankey's in B, but it, it's niche in yellow is, is worth it. Uh, Hitmon Lee is notable. The only thing that really that saves it from being in Don't Bother is that it gets High Jump Kick, which is the best fighting type move in Gen 1. And it's got very good attack, but its special is absolutely pathetic, so it dies to confusion <laughs> from anything. Its defense, physical defense, is also very bad. Uh, it's not lightning fast, its speed is okay. It's just, uh, it's a sad state of affairs for fighting types in general. Speaking of which, oof. <laughs> Hitmonchan is worse than, hit, worse than Hitmonlee in almost every way. Uh, you'd think that because it gets the elemental punches, it might have some decent coverage, but... Elemental Punches are all special, and Hitmonchan special is disgusting. I'd look it up, but I I just ate. I'm sorry. Lickitung. Awful. <laughs> really bad. Um, you don't need a normal type with poor stats, and that's what Lickitung is. It's a normal type with poor stats. 
It doesn't even learn Lick in red and blue. I don't know how they messed that up. Coughing. Sorry. Don't bother. Uh, very cool. I, I really like its expression. I think Weezing has one of the best designs in Pokemon. It's horrifying, but its in-game performance is just not good. You can only pick one up in Pokemon Mansion, so very late into the game. And at that point, what use do you have for a pure poison type that favors defensive stats? Nothing. So, that's... Oh, yeah, that's everyone for Team Rocket. Not a great showing. Rhyhorn. Usable. I'd say that Rhydon is overall better than Golem. The main issue is that Rhyhorn... Is actually quite weak until it evolves into Rhydon, which happens at a fairly high level, I believe the 40s, and it's also only catchable in the Safari Zone, uh, sorry, catchable for the first time in the Safari Zone, which is quite late into the game, so you just don't have access to Rhyhorn and Rhydon. C tier seems fine. Chansey, one of the best Pokemon in competitive, not in-game, oof. Uh, putting aside the Nightmare, which is actually catching it in the Safari Zone, it's very slow, and its defense, I believe, is literally base 5, which is horrible. Uh, I know that's not the worst flaw to have, because it's not supposed to take physical hits, and it's massive HP, sponges, physical hits anyway. But if you're trying to just sweep through the game, you don't want Chansey on your team. Dangela. Bad. <laughs> uh, the only pure grass type in the game... It's got a good defense, a pretty good special, 100, but what really kills it is its move pool. You get the powders, which is good, but it's slow, it's available late in the game, and once you put them to sleep, what are you going to do? Like, Mega Drain them? It's not worth it. Kangaskhan. I'm going to put in usable. Uh, just barely. It's, it's perfectly serviceable once it's actually on your team, but you have to catch in the Safari Zone, which is an awful experience. And that's late in the game. So you just don't have Kangaskhan available to help you for most of the game. It's okay, though. Horsey. Another addition to the <laughs> usable tier of outclassed water types. That's about all I can say. It's outclassed. Why would you use Horsey and Cedra when you have other options that are be better in almost every way? Uh, there's no Kingdra in this gen, so... Pass. Goldeen, Goldeen, Goldeen. Exact same situation, except Sea King doesn't get an evolution later on. I guess it's already got the King part. Uh, what a misnomer. Not good. They, really, the only reason it's not in D is just because Water Type itself is quite good. Star you. Yeah! Um gonna put it in A. Very similar to Tentacool. It's very fast. Uh, it's even faster than Tentacool. And it just has slightly less special, but has better typing. Water Psychic. Um, if you're willing to invest the Thunderbolt TM, it can actually learn Thunderbolt. Uh, if you give this thing Surf, Blizzard, or Ice Beam, Psychic, and Thunderbolt, that's, that's the rest of the game secured right there. Starmie is excellent. Probably the best water type in the game. If you're willing to invest all of those resources into it. Mr. Mime. It's good. It's a psychic type. Um, in order to get one, you have to trade an Abra for it. I don't know why you would, because Abra's better. But Mr. Mime is fine. The main advantage it has over the Abra line is that it can learn Thunderbolt. But at the expense of war stats overall. You do get trade experience, which is nice. But, eh, I'd just stick with Abra. Alright, Scyther. It's okay. It's another Safari Zone catch, so what a headache. Its move pool is horrible. <laughs> it's basically slash on a stick. Good stats, though, and very cool looking. I know that's not a factor in these, but Scyther's cool. Uh, at least it gets the consolation that when it evolves into Scissor, it takes over the Generation 4 metagame. That's nice. Gotta wait a few more years, buddy. Jinx! I'm debating whether to put Jinx in A or B. I think I'm going to go with A. Psychic Ice is a very 
good offensive type combination in Generation 1. Destroys most of the endgame. Its availability is not great, but if you're able to give it the Psychic TM, uh, you can run through pretty much everything. It's got perfect stats for sweeping. It's a very solid pick. Electabuzz. It's okay. Very late availability, you can only get it at the power plant. It's a perfectly serviceable electric type, but at the same time you can acquire Electabuzz, you can acquire better options. It's okay. Magmar. Similar to Electabuzz, but even worse, because <laughs> it's a fire type. Stats are fine, but poor availability, it's in the Pokemon Mansion. I won't even say there's better fire types you could use, there's just better Pokemon you could use. Sorry, Magmar. Pinsir. Just barely in C. It, it's almost in Don't Bother. Stats are actually quite good, but the issue is that its move pool is a, a desert. There's nothing. Uh, probably the best thing you can do is Guillotine Cheese. Um, Guillotine is another one-hit KO move like um, Horn Drill that Nidoking can abuse. You can do the same X Accuracy trick, but Pinsir is slower. So you might also need to use an X Speed. Just do something else. <laughs> Tauros, uh, the king of the competitive metagame, a C in-game, and that's really for one reason, it's purely for availability. It's very good if you can manage to capture it in the Safari Zone, but good luck with that, uh, and once you do, most of the game is over, and at that point in the game, you can catch even stronger Pokemon. Magikarp. Goes and see, despite how powerful Gyarados is. Gyarados is incredibly good, but the investment that it takes to get there, you can't just overlook that. You can pick up the Magikarp from the dude selling one right before Mount Moon, but in a generation without experience share, it is just such a nightmare to get Magikarp up to the level where it evolves, especially in the early game. And it's, it's worth noting that Magikarp is in the slow experience group. Pokemon level up at different rates based on what experience group they're in. So Magikarp takes more effort to get to level 20 than, say, a, um, a Jigglypuff. Um, once you actually get to Gyarados, of course, it's very strong. Even more so in Generation 1, where its special stat is 100, so it can actually use special attacks fairly well. It just takes so much to get to the point where it's usable that I, I can't put it any higher than C. I'm sorry. Lapras. C. And it's C because... Even though it's a free Pokemon that's gifted to you in Silphco, I believe it's gifted to you at level 15, which is just pathetic for that point in the game. It is so underleveled that it takes just way too much work to get it up to the level where it's a, an actual contributing member to your team. Lapras itself is not bad at all, um, but it just takes work to get it to the point where it actually does things. Ditto, also known as Metamon absolutely awful <laughs> one of the worst pokemon in generation one i'm afraid uh, in generation two you you'd be able to give it hold items that give it uh major boosts while it's still a ditto in order to help it actually transform but generation one doesn't have that you have to waste a turn to transform into your opponent and because you spend that turn you're always at a disadvantage uh, it's just not worth it i'm sorry ditto it's also available very late pokemon mansion cute though Everyone's favorites, uh, the Evolution pair. All right, so Vaporeon. Uh, I'm going to put it in good. It's actually one of your earlier options for a water type. If you didn't choose Squirtle, you can get EV and sell it on City. Uh, evolve it into a Vaporeon. Vaporeon is thick. It's got a ton of HP and very good special. It's perfectly good. Uh, I would say it's not quite as good as Staryu or uh, Tentacool but perfectly serviceable. Uh, it also gets Acid Armor, which it's not really useful in game, but it's just a cool move. You like melt, very nice. All right, and the other evolution, Jolteon. One of the best electric types in the game. Lightning fast, I believe 130 speed, 110 special. So crits all day. Uh, notably, it also gets double kick, so it's not completely helpless against rock grounds. I, I would just switch though, but it's, it's very good. Much better than Pikachu and Raichu. I, I would say 
for most playthroughs, this is the evolution you would go with. Uh, it depends a lot on your starter choice, but you can't really go wrong with Jolteon. I always thought it was weird that uh, Eevee only got two evolutions in Gen 1, because the, there's like a Firestone and a Leafstone as well, right? What happened to those? I, I, yeah, I'm kidding. I know about Flareon. He's right here. Uh, <laughs> poor Flareon. He's... Oh, Flareon. The um, thing is, if you look at his stats, they're actually incredible. It has 130 base attack. That's the same as Machamp. And 110 base special. Both of those are incredible. Most Pokemon would love to have even one of those. But the reason why Flareon is all the way down here is... One, it's a fire type, which is not good in Gen 1. And two, everyone knows Flareon's got no moves. <laughs> its move pool is just pitiful. I'm sorry, Flareon. Will things get better for you? We're still waiting. <laughs> Porygon. Horrendous. One of the worst Pokemon in the game. Absolutely abysmal stats. O okay, move pool. Even though you can technically get it in Celadon City, which is like mid-game, realistically, because it costs the maximum number of coins, unless you sit there at the slot machines, you're not going to be able to afford it until much later in the game after you've defeated the Elite Four multiple times, at which point, what's the point? Don't use Porygon. Lord Helix. I'm going to put him in B. Uh, and not for the memes. Even though he comes really late, uh, he actually comes at a decent level 30 it's it's a little low but for wild uh, compared to most wild pokemon it's it's okay it's here because its special stat is ridiculous it's like 120 it's got very very good special so if you wanted uh you could take omanite evolve it up into Om omastar uh, and take out the rest of the game it's it's pretty good it's also very cute uh, i love these little frills yeah you, you could make an argument for it being in c because of its very poor availability but i think it's it's Incredible special is good enough to get it up and be. Unlike the Dome Fossil and Kabudu, I'm sorry. It uh, doesn't really get that many great moves. It does get Slash. Uh, slash is the main reason it's up here instead of in Don't Bother. Being able to Slash things is always useful. But it can't really use its Water Stab at all because its special is so poor. That's really all there is to say about Kabudu. Comes late. Can slash things, but other things can also slash things. Aerodactyl. Eh. Lightning fast, one of the fastest Pokemon in the game at 130 base power. Sorry, not base power, base speed. And what do you do with that speed? Uh, nothing. Uh, you, you outspeed things, and then you hit them, like, minor damage. <laughs> it, it just doesn't have the moves yet. Uh, you'd think it would have moves like Earthquake and Rock Slide, which it gets later on, but... Uh, in Generation 1, it's mostly limited to, like, normal moves and, like, wing attack. That's just not what you want to be doing. I guess you could also use Fly, but that's not going to be breaking the meta either. Sorry. Snorlax, also known as Kabigon in Japanese. I love him. He's so cute. He's good. Um, he would be an A if he came earlier. He's very strong. He's thick. He can take a hit. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have the amazing special defense he would gain in generation two after the split but that he kind of makes up for that with the fact that he learns amnesia which is bust in generation one so he can patch up his special and do like special shenanigans or you can just click body slam and take out most things very solid and very very cute i love this what is he is he like a bear all right articuno It goes in A. Yeah, th that's a little weird to say, considering how late in the game it comes, Seafoam Islands. At that point, there really isn't much of the game left. But I think I have to put it in A, because Articuno can solo the game on its own once you acquire it. It's very, very good in Generation 1, because the special split hasn't happened yet. So, it actually has 125, I believe, special attack, which is incredible. And Blizzard is 90% accuracy. So you can just spam Blizzard and win the rest of the game. I, I think Articuno's ability to do that, uh, for the toughest portion of the game, aside from the early game, the toughest parts of the game are early game, before you get to uh, Vermilion City, and late game, the Elite Four boss, boss rush. Zapdos can also solo the game once you acquire it. Uh, both Articuno and Zapdos come at a very high level, 50. So pretty much out of the box, uh, they're ready to take on the Elite Four. 
Zapdos a little less so than Articuno because you need a TM to actually teach a Thunderbolt. It doesn't learn a Thunderbolt on its own. But the difference between it and Articuno is that it does get Drill Pack, whereas Articuno does not. So you can use Drill Pack to take out Grass types that might resist your electric moves. Zapdos is very, very good. A tier for sure, I would say. Moltres. Yeah, what, what, what a difference. <laughs> It, it honestly almost goes in Don't Bother because the only thing you can use it for is the Elite Four, and it doesn't particularly do well there. Whereas Articuno and Zapdos, you could technically use for uh, a couple gyms after you're able to obtain them. Yeah, Moltres just isn't that good. On paper, it's a fair bit stronger than Charizard. Same typing, but it's got uh, a little less speed, but much higher special. Honestly, not even much higher. Yeah, actually, it's not better on paper. I'm sorry, Moltres. Just, just, just be glad you're not in D. You almost were. D for Dratini. <laughs> Dratini, you catch it in the Safari Zone. It is criminally underleveled. Slow experience group. And until it evolves into Dragonite, it's basically worthless. And even once it gets up to Dragonite, what's it going to do? Dragonite, of course, has incredible attack. But the investment that it takes up to get up to Dragonite is not worth the return, at least for an in-game playthrough. All right. Last Pokemon, Mewtwo, the undisputed best Pokemon in Gen 1. You could argue that he's the best Pokemon ever relative to his peers. Uh, Mewtwo is absolutely unstoppable. There's nothing you can do. Uh, if your opponent sends out Mewtwo and you're playing Generation 1, just give up. <laughs> Save yourself some time. Uh, that being said... He's basically your reward for finishing the game. Yeah, you find him in the unknown dungeon, so I, I think we're just going to leave him down here in the unknown tier. It, you really can't rate him for his in-game performance because he doesn't have one. <laughs> He's not in the game. And with that, I think this is the list. I think we've got um, a fairly even distribution. That's not the goal, but that's what ended up happening. Don't bother tier... Poison types and fighting types galore, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you've never played Generation 1, I would say... Maybe give it a try. <laughs> I'll be honest, um, I played Generation 1 when it came out, because I, I was born around that time. And it's, it's an experience. Uh, it was a good game back then, but I was like four, so... I mean, I liked everything. I'd say that nowadays it's worth playing for the experience, just to see how broken everything is honestly the difference between generation one and two is probably the biggest difference between any pokemon generation uh, they fixed so many things from generation two onwards pokemon was a really solid stable game and not much changes gen one is an absolute mess but uh, if you want to experience the mess for yourself maybe uh, pick up a copy pick up a nidoran and uh, go win the game <laughs> Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll hopefully see you on the next video. Bye.